everyone, welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to today's daily quiz session with us. Before we start with today's question analysis, here's a quick reminder. In case you are looking for expert guidance for the upcoming UPSC Civil Services exam, now is the time to take a big step. You could fill up the Google form that has been provided in the description box of this video. How will it help you? Because once we have your details, we will get in touch with you immediately and arrange a one-on-one -on -one counselling session for you from our experts. And now let's jump on to today's agenda. And the first question on your screen talks about Quad, Quadrilateral Security Dialogue. Why has this question been taken up for analysis? This is because a newspaper headline from the Hindu that says how. US Ambassador to India, Mr. Eric Garcetti, has appreciated India. He has honoured India by saying that India will be the key driver of a gender in the Quad Forum. It says that India is almost like the steering wheel of the Forum and it is key for the progress of diplomatic partnership. And in this slide, the first statement of the first question says Quad or the Quadrilateral Security Dialogue is a diplomatic partnership between India US, South Korea and Japan. Clearly, this is a wrong statement because although Quad comprises four countries, but it is not South Korea. In fact, it is Australia, along with India, US and Japan. Initiated back in 2007 on the recommendations of the then Japanese Premier Shinzo Abe, the diplomatic partnership sought to create better regional cooperation, more stability, and development of the Indo-Pacific region. So the first statement is wrong. Now looking at the second statement regarding Quad, it says Exercise Malabar is a naval exercise including the Quad nations. This is a valid statement because one of its own kind, the Malabar exercise initially started as a bilateral naval exercise between India and US. Much later, Australia and Japan joined in. In fact, Singapore has also been a part of Malabar at some point of time. So we can say that the first statement, in fact, the first part of the second statement is valid. Now, the second part says Australia rejoined this exercise in 2020. Once again, it is valid because it is true that Australia had in between, owing to political pressure from Chinese government, it had withdrawn from Quad. But... In 2010, as military cooperation revived and strengthened between US and Australia, it once again became a key member of the Quad. So we can say that second statement is valid, but not the first statement. So which means that B here will be the correct answer because two only is valid. Talking about the second question here, it says fame to. A scheme launched by the government of India is related to which of the following? First option says promoting the adoption of solar energy. Second option says giving impetus or a boost for electric vehicles. The third says development of entrepreneurs in rural areas by giving them skills and economic help. And the last option D says increasing mangrove cover along the coastline and salt pan lands in India. Here, the correct answer is B, because FAME stands for Faster Adoption of Manufacturing and Adopting of Hybrid and Electric Vehicles. One of the key agendas behind the mission is also to promote a rapid electrification of public and shared transport. In fact, the government had allocated a corpus fund of more than 10,000 crore rupees to boost the agenda of the mission. So therefore, B is absolutely the valid answer. This is also in light of India's commitment to achieve its NDCs or the intended nationally determined contributions to cut down its emission rate. With this, if we have a look at option A, it says promoting the adoption of solar energy. Now, this could be attributed to yet another scheme of the government of India, which was in news just last week. And yes, I'm talking about Pradhan Mantri Surya Odai Yojana.
which aims at installing massive, on a massive scale, solar rooftop panels across India. Talking about C. Now, C here seems related to another mission that's referred to as Aspire Mission. Aspire Mission was a scheme initiated by the government of India with the intention of promoting rural industries and entrepreneurship. And it was led under the Ministry of Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises. Talking about D. Now, D talks about yet another interesting mission to protect mangroves in India, which are often referred to as a protective shield from the sea. So now, this reminds us of Mission Mishti. Because Mission Mishti spoke about how can we protect mangroves and habitats in the shoreline. So with this, B becomes your right answer. And why was this question analysed today? Because of a news from the Hindu, which said that Australia has recently released its preferred option on pollution rules to promote green vehicles. Now, it is believed that Australia is one of the only developed countries apart from Russia that do not actually have fuel efficiency standards which are clearly laid out. And in this regard, Australia now is committed to cut down its emissions in order to promote a cleaner climate. And that's why the question was taken for you. With this, let's proceed with the third question on your screen. This talks about Gaganyan mission that is all over the news right now and the reason why we have chosen this question is because of a PIB release that talks about Vayomitra. What is Vayomitra? Now Vayomitra is the female looking humanoid robot that will be spent that will be sent by ISRO to the space. Why? The purpose is to check on the preparations. The purpose is to check on the safety standards and reliability of the apparatus that will be later used by astronauts that will travel to the space as a part of India's Gaganyaan mission. So it is like a preparatory initiative. And in this regard, the first statement here says, Gaganyaan mission will be India's first human manned space flight carrying Indian astronauts into space. Absolutely valid statement. In fact, scheduled to be launched in the early part of 2024. It is an ambitious plan that will make India a member of the elite group of nations to have had sent a human sp space flight into the space. The second question here talks about the Nisar mission. It says Nisar is a joint effort between ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization and ZAXA, the Japanese or Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. Now, this statement here is invalid because NISAR happens to be a key initiative that is a joint venture between ISRO and NASA. Let's remember that. In fact, what does NISAR stand for? So, NISAR here stands for NASA ISRO Synthetic Aperture Radar. The intention is to use radar imaging technology to study some of the most intricate and complex processes of the planet. So therefore, second statement here becomes invalid. And the third statement says, the purpose of NISAR is to launch a powerful satellite that will observe Earth's dynamic surfaces, including ice masses, land and vegetation. Now, this is absolutely valid. So we can say the first and the third statement here are valid, making C your correct answer. And now on to the fourth question, which talks about wetlands. Why was the question taken up for analysis today? In the light of a release in the PIB, which says that how Honorable Prime Minister has inaugurated and laid a foundation for a very massive, ambitious range of development projects that will be initiated near Guwahati, that's in Assam. The Corpus Fund would be more than 11,000 crore rupees. In this light, talking in the backdrop of Assam, the first statement here says, Deepur Bil is one of the largest freshwater lakes in Assam and it, it is the state's only Ramsar site. Well, the statement is absolutely valid because when we talk about Deepur Bil, let's remember that not only is it a huge freshwater lake here near Guwahati, it also back in 2002 was given the status of a Ramsar identified wetland. But let us not confuse this with another lake called Son Bil in Assam, 
Because if you talk about the largest freshwater lake in Assam, then that happens to be Sonbi. And here in the question, we are talking about the only wetland from the state so far, the Porpi. So the first statement is valid. Talking about the second statement, it says Assam shares its international border with Bhutan, Nepal, Bangladesh. Now, once again, this statement is invalid because here the correct statement would be that Assam shares its international borders with Bhutan and Bangladesh. So Nepal is not a country with which Assam shares its international line and hence here only the first statement is valid, making A the correct answer. And now let's quickly analyze which PYQ or which previous year question do we have for analysis today. And this is coming to us all the way from 2017. It says local self-government can be best explained as an exercise in which of the following? A. Federalism that talks about distribution of powers and administrative authority between the center and the states. Today we talk about yet another concept, cooperative or marble cake federalism. Let's remember the initiative taken by the Niti Aayog. B. Democratic decentralization, where the power is distributed top to down. It is a model in which the power and the authority is distributed from one union government towards lower rungs of the government until the grassroots level people also become self-empowered. C. Administrative delegation where you offshore your powers to other administrative units or direct democracy that talks about the right of everyone to have a franchisee to cast their votes for electing their representatives. Here absolutely B is the valid answer although we can say that C and A, in fact even D, are very closely related to the concept of local self-government. We can talk about the urban local bodies. We can talk about the Panchayati Raj Institution of India. Both these pertaining to the 74th and the 73rd Amendment Acts of the Indian Constitution, initiated back in 1992. So, under this we say that in the villages at the grassroots level, the Panchayati Raj institutions happen to be a forum for giving voice for self-governance to the local people. And similarly, when you talk about the cities, we have the urban local bodies that are different, including municipal corporations, notified area committees, or a cantonment board, depending on the size of the city or town itself, making B the correct answer. And now let's hop on to a very interesting fact of the day. This has been picked up in the line of ongoing controversy regarding can cancer as a mortal a fatal disease, be cured with minimal side effects. In this light, we talk about a revolutionary therapy that's referred to as the CART cell therapy or the CAR T cell therapy. What is this? When we talk about this therapy, let's understand that it is an abbreviation for chimeric antigen receptor T cell therapy. It is based on the concept that why not use patient's own immune system to fight the uncontrolled growth of cells in the body that's referred to as cancer broadly. Now often cancer is also synonymous with the word sarcoma. Sarcoma would mean an abstract unknown cancer that could be situated in any part of the body, often difficult to diagnose. Now this is a breakthrough in cancer treatment indeed. Why? Because very unlike the conventional treatments for cancer, where we destroy targeted cancer cells such as the chemotherapy or the immunotherapy, the CAR T cell therapy talks about using drugs that involves patients own cells or the victims own cells in these therapies the cells are drawn from the patient's body and then they are modified in the laboratory the purpose is to activate and trigger t cells but what are t cells now t cells often refers to as lymphocytes or the white blood cells of human body are cells that are responsible behind immune system Immune system is responsible for tracing and fighting infections. Any foreign infection in the body is targeted and killed through the help of the WBCs. Now, generally the T cells are generated in the bone marrow of human beings. They also are of two types. One T cell is referred to as cytotoxic T cell, while the other is referred to as helper T cell. While the cytotoxic T cell is responsible for actually killing the foreign infection, the helper T cells in turn 
send a message and activate other cells to come and fight the infection. Now under this therapy, the modified T cells are then put back or injected back in the bloodstream of the cancer patient. The purpose is, once they are triggered, they will attack specific antigens and they will target and destroy them. Now, T cells, since they are made from the blood of patient itself, are often referred to as a much safer alternative to the early conventional therapies that we talk about. Also, they are less likely, much less likely to cause a critical side effect or harm to the human body, although that is still controversial. Now, since they are using patient's own cells and activating them, this therapy has often also been referred to as the living drugs therapy. So with this, we come to an end of today's session. I hope you enjoyed the session. I'll see you soon with another quiz. In the meantime, thank you so much to all of you.